Here we go. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning. We're so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. Want to um, welcome you no matter where you find yourself this morning. Let you know um, that on this All Saints Day, um, we will be celebrating All Saints with the remembrance of those whom we have lost in our lives this past year. We will also be celebrating Holy Communion this morning. And so I invite you to get um, bread and wine or grape juice handy and um, so you can join us later in the service in that. Um, there are a lot of people who are part of worship this morning. And so I want to welcome um, Laura and Trish and Jeff and Peter and Michelle and Paul and Brandy, besides our regular team um, of Jim and Deb, whom you never see, but she's the one who makes us um, be in the right places at the right time um, on your screen. And so um, thank you to all of them um, for their help this morning. 
A few announcements as we begin this morning. Um, for those of you who find yourselves here in Colorado, um, you will have heard that there were new protocols put into place about a week ago. And, um, and so and there are some questions about what those meant and um, what that means for right now is that we can continue as we are. Um, and so groups that are meeting in the church building, you can continue to do that as long as you remain socially distanced and masked. Um, and please know this, if you're ever in a group and you feel uncomfortable meeting in person, that is fine, absolutely fine. Just please speak up and we can coordinate or help your group coordinate um, with you in and that. And so um, we just wanna make sure everybody, um, we're doing everything we can to make people feel as safe as possible. Um, one of the things that faith has long been a part of uh, for many, many years now is bell ringing for the Salvation Army at Christmas time. And Lynn Vasileski has coordinated our efforts for that. And um, she is stepping down from that role. And so we're just putting the word out there. If anybody would be interested in coordinating the bell ringers uh, for the Salvation Army for faith's part in that, uh, please either let myself or Lynn know. And um, she would love to walk alongside you for this year to help you learn how to do it. And then in a moment, you're going to hear uh, the, uh, our hymn for this morning is For All the Saints. And on that slide, as you listen to that hymn, you're going to see three people singing, myself and our youth director, Sonia, and then Rebecca, who is the youth director up in Evergreen. And Rebecca ended up in the video because she happened to be stopping by to have lunch for Sonia, and so we just invited her to come along. But I say all that just to tell you, we're looking for people who want to sing hymns, um, make those videos with Chris. And um, and so if you like to sing and um, would like to sing some of those hymns for us for worship, um, please either contact Chris or myself. You can get a hold of either one of us at, well, Chris at Chris at faithgolden.org or myself, Jane at faithgolden.org. And we'd love to help you. We do it socially distanced. We do it with masks. We um, And so, but it's just a fun time to sing some of those hymns in person. So please let us know. And then uh, in this afternoon, between 4 and 7 p.m., on the front, the large front steps of the church, um, Cherry Stroop's mission is working with the Cancer Society. And, um, and every year there are luminaries that are lit in, either in remembrance of those who have lost their battle with cancer or in honor of those who are either still battling or have won their battle with cancer. And so we wanna invite you to come and do a drive-by um, this afternoon, again, between four and 7 p.m. Those will be lit and we invite you to stop by um, to honor those folks, but also uh, to honor Cherry in her mission with the Cancer Society. So one of the, as we begin then our worship this morning, one of the great things that we have to share with one another um, is the gift of God's peace. No matter what circumstances you find yourself in today, you can know that God's peace can be yours. And so um, I'm gonna invite you to share the peace with one another in your homes, but also pick up your phones and share God's peace with those um, who might not be in your home with you this morning. So I say to you, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also, and also you. Will you please share God's peace with one another? Well, one of the things that we do on this day, um, on this All Saints Day, is that we have a time of remembrance. 
remembering those um, not just in our own congregation of faith, but those connected to folks here in our community um, who have um, died in the past year. And we remember them and honor them and um, the impact that they have had on our lives this morning. And um, invite you to join us in this time of remembrance. How it will happen is that names will be read, there will be a bell tolled for each individual person. And, um, and so we ask you to um, honor these moments as we raise these lives up in our midst. Eddie. Eddie Basque. Tom Bailey. Laura Bandor Candelis. Anne Binninghoff. Isabel Berg. Greg Campbell. John Casey. Keith Charles. Katherine Christensen. Cynthia Churchill. Ron Deverick. Don Icorn. Lindy Emerson. Richard Erickson. Ann Frazier. William Fries. Jody Frisco. Frank Gregor. Kristen Gruber. Connie Hansford. Neil Harmon. Sally Hornbeck. Karen Johnson. Richard Lacey. Arlene Lillistall. Ron Lillistall. Fred Linquist. Chuck McLaughlin. Virginia Miller. Douglas Person.
James Preen. Bruce Sanford. Carol Setzer. Glenn Stanley. John Stevenson. Dick Walters. David Williams. Leon Williams. Juan Savala. Ron Zelmer. Well, Lord, we give you thanks for these lives that we have honored this morning. We thank you for your promise of life eternal that they know. We thank you for the hope that is ours in you, that one day we will be reunited with those we love. We know, Lord, that you hold us all close to you. And so remind us this day that your gift, to, one of your gifts to us in the midst of this life is the gift of your presence always. Lord, thank you for placing these people in our lives to impact them, to uh, help shape and mold us into the people that we are. And Lord, let our lives also leave a legacy in the lives of others. We pray this in your name and in your power. Amen. So I want to um, then to invite you to sing with us then for all the saints. Hey family, we're gonna pause one second, come right back, and we're gonna do a real quick check on a, make sure we get the audio here. So we'll be right back. Go ahead and switch on. I'll just keep smiling at you as they're practice as they're trying to get the sound for us this morning. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and share from uh, from my side. So one second, um, go ahead and go back to the beginning, hon. Ready? And I'm going to send it. Hold on a second. Hold on a sec.
I invite you now to join me in the statement of our faith, a little different than the Apostles' Creed. This one was written by Holy Cross Lutheran in uh, New Market, Ontario, Canada. So please join me this morning as we proclaim our faith in these words. We believe in God who made the world and smiles upon it. We believe in Jesus who has shown us the human face of God and a love that refused to be limited, who calls us to a life that not even death can end. We believe in the Holy Spirit through whom God reaches us, surprising, prompting, and questioning us who is the life breath of creation and the source of nurture, humor, and hope. We believe in ourselves as people made in the divine image, capable of great creativity and great destruction, but called to choose between them. We believe Jesus leads us now, calling us to a life that is crazy by the standards of this world calling us to resist evil, including anything that would degrade or destroy another, and to create and protect love, justice, freedom, and peace. Thank you. 
The first lesson today comes from Revelations 21, 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who all are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The second lesson comes from chapter 11 of Hebrews, verse 32 through chapter 12, verse 1. How much more do I say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. But others were tortured refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Some died by stoning, some were sawed in half, and others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute, and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God has something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Here ends the readings. Thank you so much, Laura. Two of my favorite parts of scripture being read this morning. This morning we are going to begin a new series called Thanks and Giving. I think we often want to separate these two, but I believe that they can't really be separated. If we have truly thankful hearts, we won't be able to stop being gracious and giving. I believe that wholeheartedly, but I also know that things get in the way. Voices other than the voice of God wind their way into our lives. Life doesn't always go the way we'd like. All kinds of things happen. 
And when those things, those voices take precedence in our lives, our hearts harden or, or turn away and our world turns inward. And we become fearful and disappointed or jealous or envious. And we start thinking about all the things that we don't have and what hasn't happened the way we want it. And then when we get in those places, I think we try to fill the parts of us designed for thanks and giving with all kinds of other things and it doesn't work. So for the next few weeks, we're going to take a look and we're going to look at the things, the ideas, the focuses that help our hearts stay tuned into God's heart, that help our hearts stay tuned into thanks and giving and see how, how this might just open us up to more than we can even imagine. And so today we start off by recognizing just how connected we are. And that is by God's design and it's something to be thankful for. Today we mark All Saints Day. It is a day to remember those who have lost their lives in the past year. But I'm guessing that it is true for you as it is for me that not only those who have been lost in this last year are the ones who are remembered today. Anyone who has lost someone never forgets doing. And days like today, we always remember all of those people. There are many in my life, grandparents, great aunts and uncles, adults and youth I've had the privilege of journeying with, friends who are gone from this life. And they make a forever impression on our hearts, don't they? Our lives would not be what they are today had these folks not been a part of who we are. I mean, think about it. In my own life, my grandpa used to I can remember him pulling me onto his lap and he would say, sing for me, Janie, sing. And my Aunt LaViola, would sit on the floor with us and taught me how to shuffle cards and make the rainbow or the arch as you're shuffling them and how to play King's Corners. And I've got to tell you, those skills have been helpful on more than one youth trip. My parents, my parents have shown me what it means to be faith-filled parents, and they still are. And, and they, they, they've taught me and continue to teach me um, that you just, age is simply a number. And it's not what defines you. My friend Anne, who was stubborn and opinionated and had a heart of gold, she taught me to stand up for what I believe and to not mince words. And little baby Skylar taught me and a whole congregation what it means to love folks and shower them with kindness, not for any return, but because we can. I could go on and on, but you have your own stories, don't you? Your own people who have put their mark on you and on your life, who've taught you all kinds of things, taught you ways of being, traits you've made your own, and you are better for having them in your life, whether their time with you was for a very long time or very short. The truth is we, none of us, make it through this life alone. Even as little ones, we want to do things on our own, right? If you've ever been around a toddler, I do it, I do it, right? But even then, parents are caring for, are caring for us, and perhaps they still do. Those of you this morning who are teenagers, you definitely prefer to do things on your own and yet you still have a roof over your head or food in the cupboard. You have um, teachers that teach, that you have adults in your lives that care. You have all of that because we are not meant to do life alone, no matter how annoying we as adults can be sometimes, right? But even as adults, we have bosses or we are the boss of others. We, we rely on farmers and truck drivers for food. We rely on computer folks to create things like this, making it possible for us to gather online. We think 20 years ago or less, like we wouldn't be able to do this. We rely on gas stations and hospitals to have people staffing them at all times, even on holidays. So if we need gas or an emergency room, they're open for us. None of us, 
go through life alone, no one. So who we are and how we live matters a lot, not just to ourselves, but to those around us as well. Think of the people, not, not just those who have died, but, but anyone you know, who's, who has made an impact on your life? Who are they? How have their lives impacted yours? And how are you different because of their part in your life? As I ask those questions of you, there are just a whole bunch of people who come to mind for me, but Ms. Roller, Ms. Roller was my seventh grade, seventh and eighth grade music, choral music teacher. And she taught me to believe in my singing as a seventh grader. Steve Johnson taught me how to play the guitar. And they also taught me that you learn a lot by playing with those who are better than yourself. And that's not just a lesson for the guitar. Dr. Torkelson was my college choir director and he taught me discipline and hard work and make beautiful music. He also taught me that you don't always have to follow the conventional path in things. Again, my parents, my parents have taught me what it means to believe in someone and to support them no matter what. My friend Jeff taught me how I can be myself and be a pastor. Friends that I have have taught me to be adventuresome and to believe in myself, to trust my gut, to have fun. And again, I could go on and on and on. I am who I am, not just because of the talents and the gifts and the way God has shaped and molded me, not just because I've worked hard, but in part because of the people in my life and the imprint that they have left on me. And I am so very thankful for them. Even those whose acquaintances I'd rather not have had in my life, uh, I even give thanks for them because even they have taught me a lot about who I do and don't want to be. They too have shaped and molded me. And this is important for us. Important for us to know and to realize because we are all a part of the cloud of witnesses. People who show up in others' lives and who show up in ours. Our lives make imprints. They make a difference. And I love Hebrews 11 because it is a great reminder of how we're all connected. This particular chapter written by Paul outlines what's, what's often called the, the hall of heroes of the faith. They're the great names of the faith, right? Enoch and Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Joseph, David, Rahab, Barak, Gideon, Samson, like they're all the headliners in scriptures. The only problem with seeing them that way is that it makes them seem somehow larger than life, somehow that they are somehow more than what we are. But they really aren't. They're just people God chose to use, people like you and me. I mean, you think about it, Abraham doubted God could make him a great nation. He, he doubted that God could do that so much so that he went around God's plan and had a son by a concubine that, that created all kinds of problems. Sarah laughed when she told she was going to have a baby. Well, I think I might have too if I was 99 when I was told I was going to have a baby, right? But Joseph lorded over his brothers that one day they were going to bow to him. Right? He started having these dreams where things kept bowing to him. And, and so he told his brothers, probably not the wisest choice he ever made because it got him sold into slavery. Moses. Moses has this whole conversation with God right off the bat when God calls him about how he's not the right person. And he has excuse after excuse after excuse about why he can't be the person that God is calling him to be. David. David, one of the greatest kings in all of scripture, broke eight commandments in his relationship with Bathsheba, all in one fell swoop. Gideon. Gideon saw himself as the least of the least. Benjamin was one of the smallest tribes, and he felt like he was the least in that smallest tribe. And God calls him and says, I want you to conquer for me. And Gideon, I love what Gideon does. He's like, okay, so God, 
If you're really who you say you are, then make this fleece wet and the grass around it dry. God does that. And then Gideon's not satisfied with that, right? He says, hey, okay, that was pretty good. Now make the fleece or make the grass wet and the fleece dry, right? Gideon was testing God, didn't believe that God could really want him, Gideon. And the stories go on and on. All the people in the Bible, the, in that hall of fame, the hall of heroes in chapter 11 in Hebrews, they were all simply people with gifts, with talents, with foibles and shortcomings. They were used by God. And then there are these two little verses at the end of this, Hebrew, this chapter of this hall of fame chapter that so often get overlooked. But I want us to pay attention to them this morning. And they are this, uh, verses 39 and 40. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us, so that they would not reach perfection without us. Did you catch that? All these great people of the faith, their life stories, their journeys are not separate from ours. Their life stories, their journeys aren't complete without ours. You think about that. Their story isn't complete without us. And so we give thanks for the lives who have impacted us. And as we do that, we must also remember that we give our lives to others. Just like others' lives have made and make a difference in your own, we too make a difference in other people's lives. Our lives imprint on the lives of others. Think about that. It seems it can seem a bit overwhelming, doesn't it? But that doesn't mean it's not true. Who in your life do you spend time with? Think about that for a minute. Go through your week. Who in your life do you spend time with? Because when you spend time with people, your life is impacting theirs. Who in your life looks up to you? Whether you are 80 or 18 or 13 or 53, there are people who look up to you. Who pays attention to you? You are impacting those lives. As we give thanks for others' lives impacting ours, let us also give thanks um, for the impact that our lives can have on others. The two cannot be separated. Why would we want them to be? Lives impacting ours, ours impacting other lives. A heart that is filled with thanks overflows with giving. Paul knew this and reminds us of this connection. Not only does he toss in that, that whole theirs is not complete without ours, right? But he also addresses us then specifically in chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. And we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Since we are surrounded, say thanks that you don't have to go it alone. Say thanks and let others in. Say thanks and give glory to God for the gifts of people, faith-filled people in your life. And then Give. Give your life to others. Shake off the sin that trips you up. That means let it go. Put it down. Don't hang on to it. Let it set that aside and then run your race. Knowing you're not going to run it perfectly, but run your race. Live your own life of faith. Be an example to others. In the United States, we have this kind of idea of individualized faith. My faith is my own, and it's just about Jesus and me. But in scripture, faith always happens in community for the world. 
It is never just about me and Jesus. Run your race with endurance. Tells us that it's not always going to be easy. Take the faith-filled road, the higher road. How do we do that? We keep our eyes on Jesus first and foremost. We keep our heart connected to the heart of Jesus. We keep our mind trained on Jesus. We keep our lives being lived by the morals and the standards of Jesus. For the one who created our faith is the one who will also perfect our faith. Oh, how I give thanks for each one of you this morning, for the ways that your lives have impacted mine, and I pray how mine impacts yours. May our hearts be filled with thanks so much that they overflow into the lives of others with giving. Will you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, we so often take for granted the people, the gifts of people in our lives. And we think that we have to do life on our own or do it by ourselves when you have created us to be in community. As we have remembered this day, those who have passed from this life onto the next in the past year, we also remember all those lives who have impacted our own. And Lord, we pray in thanks for the witnesses that they have been. And we pray, Lord, that you would give us courage and strength to give in ways that have been given to us that others might know your grace, and your goodness, and your love. Lord, let us not simply be surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, but let us be part. I pray this in your name and in your power, Jesus. Amen. Count on one thing, the same God who never fails will not fail me. He won't fail in the way. The same God who never late is working all things, working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high, glorious
It is words like that that remind us, right, that days won't always be perfect and lives aren't always lived the way we want them to be lived. And yet we have a God who is amongst us every single day, a God who is worthy to be praised and to be given glory, a God who invites us, invites us to his table this morning to eat to drink, to know the gift of his presence and his grace. And so I invite whoever is going to be the communion host in your home this morning um, to uh, hang, pick up the elements with me and to say the words of institution with me. And so I invite you to pick up a piece of bread and join me. On the night Jesus showed his greatest love for us, he took a piece of bread gave thanks for it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today saying take and eat for this is my body given for you when you eat of this bread do it and remember me then i invite you to pick up your your glass of wine or grape juice and join me in saying after supper he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks for it and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and drink. For this is the new promise in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of all your sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do it and remember me. And as we remember, then I invite you to pray with me the prayer that he has taught. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you then to share this meal with one another in your homes. If you are communing in your home alone this morning, remember that you commune with all the saints this morning. And then after you have shared communion with one another, if there is someone in your home that um, is not taking communion, please remember to give them a blessing. Um, it can be as simple as remember that Jesus loves you always. And then when you're done, um, with communion, I invite you to um, into a time of, of thankfulness and praise. Remember those people who have impacted your life. Think about the ways they gave to you, and then perhaps think about ways you can give this week, whether that be of your time, your talents, or your treasure. But right now, come. Come to the table that God has prepared for you. Eat, drink, and be fed.
Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful day here in Golden, Colorado. And we are grateful for that extra hour of sleep last night. I pray especially for Dorothy Plattenberg, who is in hospice. Give comfort and strength to her daughter, Renata, Renata's husband, and to Dorothy's grandchildren. We pray for all who are ill, those facing surgery, our medical personnel, police, firefighters, and for all of us. We are thankful for our steadfast God who shows up to us all the time. I think we'll all be glad when our thank thir Tuesday voting is over. May we have a united country. We remember with solemnness and with gratitude for having the people who have gone before us in our lives. It is in your name we pray, amen. So today, go in strength to be saints of God. Live the way of God with confidence, thanks, and giving. And may God the creator Savior and Compeller, bless and guide us wherever you go. Amen.
God bless. Have a great week and know that you are loved no matter your circumstance.